Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Chassidus in the morning of 15 minutes to change our lives. Sorry, like Bo'emer. So we're discussing like Bo'emer and the greatness of Rishim Be'yachoy, and it's the perfect preparation for like Bo'emer to really uh, appreciate. Like, where it's not just about bonfires and parades, or you could say that what comes out of what we learn is a bonfire and parade. To appreciate the parade, just a, a quick story that all right, Green Glass, all of Shalom, which he was, he was a Mashpia, he was a Bach in and he was a Mashpia in Montreal. He did a lot of things in Montreal. He was, uh, and everybody called him his Makubal. It's a very holy Jew. I actually say, I had a friend that learned in Montreal. Yeah, I don't know if he, he was, I don't know if he, this happened when he was learning there, but Basically, they'd say that he would, in the morning, when you come to learn, he would ask you questions. And this question that he would ask were indicative of what you were doing. Meaning, if you'd say, oh, did you get a chance to wash your hands? It means he knew you didn't wash your hands. You know, or like sometime, now, one time, in, you know, there's plenty of snow in Montreal, and so they were having a snowball fight, and he was coming to Yeshiva. He was really old, and he was using like a, a helper, like a walking help him and someone said one of the Bachim was hiding behind the car and it says he turned to the car and he was like staring at the car whatever so when it came to like Weimar making a, the a parade in the floats so he was very unhappy in the beginning and these Bachim were taking off from Seder and the, and then doing all these floats and, the, and he didn't participate and he wrote to the Rebbe or something and the Rebbe said to him like hey talk and how is the puzzle you're not you're not involved like this is this is Rabbi Shimon's day this is the biggest thing and it says that he would like leave Yeshiva and he'd go help the Bachim paint and do the parade like he was involved in them in the the mundane stuff you know big mashpia of uh painting and making the flutes so this is how great this is how great the day is but what we're doing now is we're learning what Rashun is all about in order to appreciate how great the day is. So we're talking yesterday, it was so great that no one knew, no one even recognized how great he was. And that's why um, Rabbi Kiva said, it's enough that you, that, that, that Hashem and I know your greatness. And mean, meaning, even it was so great that it couldn't be trafish, you couldn't grasp the greatness in this physical world. Yeah, so then we talked, and then we talked about um, that that in the time of on on his yard site in Meron, the Arizal, one of his students, had a custom saying Nachum. In, in, in regards to the destruction of Mr. Migdash, basically mourning the destruction of Mr. Migdash in Benjing. And when he came to like Boemer, he also said it. He's, and the implication is the Rebbe says he said it every day. And he came on like Boemer and he came to Meron and by the cave of the Rashbi and he said it as well. And the Rashbi was not happy about it. And it says it, um, it, he co- it caused him damage for doing this. So now let's understand the story. Abiyah explanation is like this. Rashbi, by the Rashbi, was such a holy Jew that the destruction of the was not felt by him. He didn't lack. He lived in a life that spiritually felt like the base minister was around. And automatically, and being that that on Lag is the revelation of all these like we said yesterday. So therefore, it's such a day of revelation that there, there's a revelation of a feeling that 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 it is like there's no destruction of Mikdash. So why is this guy saying nothing? Why is guys? Um, why was the student of Arizal? Being sad over the destruction of Mikdash. This is Rabbi Shimon Baruchai's day. The revelation of Shimon Baruchai, the revelation of the level of no destruction is being revealed. And he's saying, Nachum on the destruction. What, what's going on? So we find from here, we see two amazing ideas. Because like thinking about it, but one, like, like the, the obvious question is one second. Yeah, okay, it's nice. that Rabbi Shimon Baruchai is on this level that it was there was no destruction of the Mikdash for him, spiritually. But, but I'm not Rabbi Shimon. 
And even, and, and this is sort of the question. So we find two things. One is, she has something special on it that no other day of the year has. I feel the Shabbos of Yom Tov, even on Shabbos and Yom Tov. Because, Harayom, Shatamir Ariz on Nen Nash, Alamiras Nachim, Black Boemer, the loyal Alamir Nachim, Gamba Mesa, Simchas, a Kheri Shabbos Yom Tov. Because I realized soon, I said Nachim, he said on Shabbos and Yom Tov, and he didn't get nothing, there's no problems with it. But only on Black Boemer, there was a problem with what he did. And secondly, the Simcha, Ilul, Ashbi, he, the Holy Soul. And this shows us that the Simcha of Black Boemer is for every single year. I feel even to someone that's not above this idea of destruction in the base of Mikdash. Meaning, you could say, if you're on a level, or so then yeah, you feel this simcha. But the Rishimba simcha is meant for all of us, even us that don't have this level of feeling like the Rishimba Yechayim. That's why this, that's why this person. And we are living in a time that we do say Nachum, or this person said Nachum every day. And Rashbi was unhappy, and he's being sad on this day. There's no reason to be sad. There's no reason to say Nachum. <coughs> you have to be happy. Meaning, meaning, Rabbi Shimon was showing that Rabbi Shimon's effect on the world and what his effect on like Bohemian is that this, this high level of Rabbi Shimon. For example, if there's no destruction, that film no destruction was brought down to the extent that he expected it was possible for, for people to be able to feel that level. Kalema meaning, and that shows us what is the idea of the Rashbi is to connect the two extremes, two opposite ends. To draw down what's the, the highest of levels I feel as my Jager shell, the Khal Katinis Katarnam, even the level that he becomes one with Hashem, take that level. And bring it all the way down. That's what she was doing. On one hand, like we said on, on, on his day, that he, when he passed away, he said, I'm, I'm connecting with Hashem in the connection, eternal connection, which is the highest level. In the same, in the same way, together with that, he's saying, and we all have to be down here, Basimcha. To the extent that we should not even be be sad of the destruction of Mesa Migdash on, on Lagu Amen, because it's such a great simcha, such a great level of revelation. And that's what he and that's what he's saying. It's beautiful. Gimel. So now, so now that we said we showed that Rabbi Shim he had these two extremes. On one hand, he was the highest of high, there was no destruction. But together with that, like Bohemer, he brought it down to the extent that we should all be feeling this way. We can see this in, in, in the way he did things. Let's see. We can find this idea of these two extremes also in, in regards to the Nigla, the reveal parts of Torah, and also in regards to his Pesak Dinim. The way he passed. Nehemiah says, It says in the Pasuk that this Torah shouldn't leave your mouth. So, yes, in the Bryce, there's a Machlekes. Rabbi Yishmael, Sevim, Shinad Vayim, Kiksavan. It's not literal like it's written. Meaning, the little, in, little I, understanding of this is that you just have to learn Torah. That it should never leave your mouth words of terror. You shouldn't be busy working, you should be learning terror. Yeah, they should never stop learning terror. Ella, and that's it's rubbish I'm saying that's not how you interpret it. Ella, um, you have to do like the ways of the land, like normal people, which is you have to go to work. So Rabbi Shmo says. It doesn't mean literal that the whole day you just learn. It means you go to work and also you spend some time learning. Rabbi Shimon Rechai says, It's literal. You have to learn Torah all day. When we do what Hashem wants and we, and we do everything right and we learn Torah all day. So other people will figure it out and we'll, we'll do the work that needs to get done so we can have what we need. Like Amara Mastem, like Amara finishes 
What's what's the what's the halacha? Is it according to Rabbi Shmuel that you have to go to work, or is it going to be Shimon that that you don't need to? So the answer is Harb also Rabbi Shmuel also also be Adon. A lot of people did like Rabbi Shmuel and went to work and it worked and they survived and it worked out well. A lot of people tried to do and um, yeah, Rabbi Shmuel. But also, Rashbi, and contra Rashbi, some people try to do it like the Rashbi and just go, just learn. Let us be honest, it didn't work for them. So it's a very high madre, it's a very hard level what he's asking, and it doesn't normally work out well for people that just go to do that. So, Nira, Mizia, so what comes out of this? Shaseder, Limon, Atayra, Shal, Rashbi, Hunailim, Magbala, Sa'elam, that the order of Rashbi's learning is way above nature, it's above the world. And practically, people can't do this. It didn't work out. Meaning, what Rashbi is demanding, what he's saying is the right way to do things, is right for him and people on his level, way above and beyond. And, and most people can't do this. And if they try, they're going to fail miserably. Tim calls there. So that's on one hand. One hand is way high, way above. He's out of reality. But him calls there together with this. Ash Rashbi Atzmi. Even though his whole nature was way above and beyond the world, that his whole life was just Torah, and he didn't have to work. He When he came after 13 years of being in the cave, and they left him and his son. The first 12 years that he was in the Maya, in the cave, and specifically the 13th year, it's Allah, when it's Atzim, he went up even greater level in the 13th year. Because remember that he went out after 12 years and then they were too rough with the world. They couldn't handle the world. And so people working and it wasn't good. And he didn't discuss this. And they came back in for another year and they fixed and they realized how to balance them. Call Hecha to Havei, Whatever Rabbi Leza destroyed, call Maka Im Shabbi Leza Haya Manish Al Hanhaga Shel Kharish Zriya. Whatever Rabbi Leza would punish people working, Mishum Shalo Yach Lisba Shemanich and Chaya Elam Vaiskin Mikhaya Shah, because it bothered him. You're working? Go learn Tayra. The whole world was meant for Tayra, not for work. And and Rabbi Eliezer couldn't handle this, and he would he would punish them. To have a master Rabbi Shimon, Rabbi Shimon would fix it. It's not just he didn't punish like his son, El Adraba, but even more on the contrary. He fixed. Meaning, on one hand, he's over here, he's in the, he's in the clouds, and he's like, oh, you just got to learn all day, you can't go to work. What are you wasting your time working? You have to learn. And someone else will take care of it. But the other hand, when he sees people working and sees people having to do the work, and his son, even more than his son, his son can't handle him. He's like, hey, and he starts punishing them. Rabbi Shimon goes against what his fire is, so to speak, and he goes and helps them, and he makes sure he fixes whatever his son has destroyed. Satam la mase, his be Rabbi Eliezer, dai lo'elam anivata. And so they ends it off that Rabbi Eliezer, his son says, it's not you and I. So Eliezer realizes this idea of Rabbi Shimon Yechai because it only applies for us to. We can sit there all day learning Torah and have to worry about work or anything else and we'll take care of it. But the rest of the, the rest of the people can't. But what we see here, we got to, I got to, we got to go. But what we see here is these two extremes of Eliezer. On one hand, he's all up above and beyond and he's doing all these great things. On the other hand, he's way, he's he's in the world. And Mitzvah Shem will continue tomorrow. Oh, yeah. Have a good day.